All right, hello and welcome to Camel Finance. I'm your boy Camel, and today, today I want to briefly talk about this left translated cycle idea because I'm getting a lot of questions about it. People don't seem to be very clear on whether it's still valid, what for me is my invalidation, and what are some signs I could look for to say, no, that's definitely not happening. So I want to quickly go over that, and then I'm going to discuss a little bit about something called bits and sats for Bitcoin, which I want to start to raise awareness for. Then we are going to talk about the ETF, because the numbers are actually quite encouraging. And they're also... When I was looking at these numbers, I was actually quite surprised for myself. And I think realistically, we've had far too high of expectations. And that is the reason that the price is just not really doing much. But under the hood, the numbers are actually more encouraging than you might think. So I'm going to go through that. And then we're going to do a little bit of, I don't like this word, but macro. We're going to call it macro for three tabs. And then we'll do some charts. So without further ado, I'm going to use this chart here for Bitcoin because it's not got any of the positions or cycle counts on. It's kind of as clean as we can get. So we can get rid of this. Okay. Now, the basic premise, and of course, it's just a fractal for illustrative purposes. This is by no means in designed to be traded or followed to the tick or anything like that. But the overall expectation for a left translated cycle is that between the lows to lows, right, we go four years between this low and the prior low. And if we walk forward four years from this FTX low to November, roughly, of 2026, that's when we should see the next four year cycle low for Bitcoin. So if it's a right translated cycle, that just means the peak comes after the midpoint. The midpoint, of course, in a four year cycle is two years. So any peak, a peak any time before November of this year, 2024, would be, technically speaking, before the midpoint, right? If the November 2022 is the four year cycle low, two years forward from that is November this year, 2024, and that would be exactly halfway. So if we were to top in November of 2024, we would call this a mid-translated cycle. And what that means is any peak, any top that is to form before November of this year, we will consider a left-translated cycle, just meaning that the top came to the left of the halfway point, and thus we should expect a longer bear market because there is more than half the cycle left before that next four-year cycle low. And of course the inverse is true. Any peak that comes after November of this year, we would consider a right translated cycle because the peak has come to the right hand side of the halfway point. So with that out of the way, this whole idea of a secular bear market that lasts more than a year, which is what, of course, we're used to for Bitcoin. We're used to a three year up, one year down, three year up, one year down pattern. I'm just suggesting that if we were to get a left translated cycle top, we would then have to spend more time coming down merely because... It's as simple as this. There's a four year cycle low to low. And if we top this side of the halfway point, then there's more time left, right? Of course, if we were to top, to top on the right hand side of the midpoint, there would be less time left. So that's the first thing I think we want to point out. Left translated cycle top just means the peak comes before November of this year. Now it does not predict time. It, it could come today and it could come all the way up to the day before November. So when I say left translated cycle top, that's all I mean. That is all I mean by left translated cycle top, that it comes before the halfway point. So then going back to this fractal, if I stretch this out a little bit, you can see that it kind of doesn't, it's, it's not too far off, but it's also not tracking very well. It's kind of like a stretched out version, right? This bit kind of fits nicely with here. Then we've got this little Bart Simpson pattern thing. This grind and consolidation here is quite nice and on track. And so is the next grind up into this consolidation here. So it's not too bad. It's just taking a bit longer than it did the time before. But the structure and the, and the pattern of the fractal is not too dissimilar. And so the question becomes, is this really what's going on? Is this possible? And where does the invalidation come? And the answer to that is, unfortunately, not as black and white as you might like, okay? And I'll show you why. There are two scenarios here, one where we could invalidate this and be sure that we've invalidated it, and another one where we could have a short-term invalidation that still resolves in a left translated cycle. If we were to take this low from back here, which I have marked on my other chart, and if you've been here before, you will have seen as the 60-day low for Bitcoin, I've been saying this over and over again. If we print a failed cycle by undercutting that low, right? If we come down here, close below, and then start a downtrend, which is what would be implied by undercutting that low and printing a failed cycle, then I would say we have at least short-term invalidation and that the most bullish outcome, if this was to happen, was that we would continue to hold this upward sloping red support line right here. Let me move the fractal out of the way so we can be really clear about this. And then at some point in the future, perhaps, we could consider moving higher. 
complete, total and utter invalidation would come from printing a failed cycle and then breaking down of this trend line. We do that and all bets are off. Absolutely no left translated cycle top in my opinion. In fact, we have to even entertain blockchain backer being correct about that being the short term or top for Bitcoin. So let's make this really clear. If we lose this, okay, after printing a failed cycle, then I am saying 100% certain in myself that we are not having a left translated blow off top to new highs. The reason I said earlier is it's kind of complicated. It's not as simple as black and white is if we were to print a short term failed cycle here, but then hold this, right? There's still a possibility that we could get a left translated cycle top, meaning of course, by definition, the top comes before November. So whilst that would be wildly later than I am kind of expecting to see in this orange fractal, right? This orange fractal kind of predicts that we're going to top before the halving and local invalidation or short term invalidation, as I said, comes from printing a failed cycle. But you could see we could still do this yellow thing here, right? And still put in a blow off top, still top before the midpoint. And thus we would still have a left translated cycle, even if invalidation occurs here. So this isn't hard invalidation. This is what I would, let's term it soft invalidation. Okay. This is what I would call a significant warning sign if we were to print a failed cycle and close below this red horizontal. But so long as we didn't close below this upward sloping red support line, then I would consider this only soft invalidation and still gives us the chance to do that. Now, greatly reduced, admittedly, but this would still give us more than enough chance and space to print a left translated cycle top. And I suppose the last thing I ought to point out here is to move this orange thing out the way. As it stands right now, right, we've set the first of three angles of attack for the parabola. Arguably, whether we do this now or whether we need to continue sideways until the next 60 day cycle low, which is in about 25 days time, and then set a trend line. If we continue to do this, right, if we continue to do something like this, which is not that dissimilar from what we're doing right now, it would just probably occur from about here, right? If we continue to do this, then we will be about to set a second angle of attack. And after we set the second one, usually what you get is a third one, meaning we'll draw a line like this, and that's where we'll be looking to exit the market. But again, if I go back to this idea of hard invalidation and soft invalidation, let's say we get a soft invalidation here, we fail cycle and we go, uh oh, okay, this could be bad. At the same time, we may just be coming in for a retest of this, right? The top of this, which is about 32K. Maybe we do something like this and then hold that trend line and continue up. Then we set the second angle and then we set the third angle. So here's our second angle, it'd be somewhere in there. Our third angle would be the near vertical one. And all of this, if it was to occur before November of this year, would still classify as a left translated cycle. So, so again, one last time, left translated just means the top comes before the halfway point, which just so happens to be November of this year. Any top before that is classified as a left translated. Any top after that is classified as a right translated cycle. If we were to lose this and print a failed cycle in the short term, I would consider that soft invalidation and certainly an early warning sign. But there would be one last chance saloon to hold this 32K range break and the upward sloping support line. And then that would still leave us open to a left translated cycle top. However, if this is to occur, this soft invalidation followed by a bounce, I would still put the probability of putting in a left translated cycle top significantly below if we were to continue moving higher out of here. So. Soft invalidation still leaves a left translated cycle on the table, but massively reduced probability of doing so. Hard invalidation, meaning we get the early warning sign and the breakdown, right? Then absolutely left translated cycle top is invalidated and off the table. And if we continue to hold above this daily cycle, if we do indeed put in, where's my fractal tool? I've showed this a couple of times, right? There's nothing to say this isn't coming next. Something like this, stretch this out a bit, make it fit. Look, there's nothing to say this isn't coming next right? Except given that we may well be at the later portion of this blow off top move, then it's going to start to get a lot more steep and a lot more vertical than this. In fact, even if we scratch this orange fractal, my eyes have just been drawn to this. Assuming we do this, right? Look, this would still be a second angle of attack. This would give us, you know, into the middle of this year, June, July, and that would still give us time to then put in that final portion with a third steeper angle of attack. And you can see here that that left translated cycle top has not been invalidated yet. So until we get soft invalidation, there's not even a warning sign that this is struggling. And until we get hard invalidation, then the thing is still my base case. Suppose there is one more invalidation that could occur here. What if we just do this, right? All the way into support and then break down. Well, that's invalidated as well. So I hope that's clear. There's lots of scenarios on the table, as you can see, but at the end of the day, it's a market, right? It is a market, anything can happen, nobody knows. The only thing I know is that I don't know, and this remains correct until it's proven wrong. I wanted to do my bit for the community, no pun intended. <laughs> 
Um, oh, oh, it's so stupid. I wanted to do my bit for the community because I believe the time has come to make the switch to start using bits and sats. So all I'm going to do here is quickly highlight this in case you're unfamiliar. I do first want to say that this isn't my idea. I didn't pioneer this. I'm just simply trying to push this forward as I believe this would be a positive move for Bitcoin. So how would this exactly work? Well, as I'm sure you know, one sat or satoshi is equal to one one hundred millionth of a Bitcoin. But a bit is equal to 100 sats, and therefore there are 1 million bits in a Bitcoin. So we can think of this like bits. We can think of bits like a dollar, and we can think of the sats like the cents. So just as cents go 100 to the dollar, sats go 100 to the bit. And by tracking the price of bits, we instantly know the price of sats, because you just divide the price of bits by 100, of course. And if you want to find the price of one whole Bitcoin, you just multiply one bit by a million, and thus you get the price of a whole Bitcoin. There are a number of advantages to starting to track the price of Bitcoin in bits and sats instead of whole Bitcoin, right? If we move to bits and sats, it allows us, number one, to target dollar bit parity and eventually dollar sat parity. So if we've got a 40K Bitcoin price, one bit is equal to four cents. And it's pretty easy for anyone to see, whether you're a newbie or not, that there's plenty of upside from four cents to one dollar. If we target dollar bit parity, then it's pretty easy to say, well, if I buy one bit here, which is 100 sats at four cents, you know, there's a lot of upside before we get to one dollar, that magical round number. And of course, after that, we can then aim for one sat equals one dollar. So it's actually easier for most people to visualize one bit going from four cents to a dollar than it is to visualize Bitcoin going from 40,000 to one million dollars, when in fact, they're the exact same thing. So I think this will help onboard new users. Using smaller units like bits and sats can help reduce the barrier to entry for people who are hesitant to invest in Bitcoin due to its high price. Most would rather own whole bits than fractions of a Bitcoin, even though they're the same thing. I'm sure everyone has had this conversation with a no-coiner at some point where people say, well, a Bitcoin is 40K, it can't go any higher, right? That's this bit here. Or people say, yeah, well, I can't afford $40,000 for a whole Bitcoin, so I'll just buy this altcoin instead. Using bits will solve this problem, I believe. Also, tracking the price of bits instead of Bitcoins smooths out the volatility. At $40,000 Bitcoin, for example, one bit is four cents, which means if Bitcoin falls from 44K to 40K, one bit remains unchanged at four cents per bit. So this will help show that the daily fluctuations are just rounding errors and that we should maintain focus on dollar bit parity. Smoothing out volatility would also make it easier for new users to hodl rather than having to stress over seeing multiple thousands of dollar daily fluctuations in the price of a whole Bitcoin. And so if all of that sounds good, I think we should push for this change to be implemented. You can start tracking the price of bits in TradingView just by typing in your preferred Bitcoin USD chart and then dividing it by 1 million, just like it shows here. You could copy and paste that if you want to use the bitstamp chart. If you then go to chart settings, symbol, precision and change the two decimal places down here, you will find you can now add it to your watch list and then start tracking the dollar value of bits. So at the moment, the scale is a bit messed up, but I'm trying to get in touch with TradingView so we can add a proper ticker and start tracking bits. You can also go and bug your favorite influencer to start talking about bits and ask them to familiarize your audience with it if you think it's a good idea. I've done my bit. I've mentioned it more than one time on this channel. I've also been reaching out to other influencers to see if I can get them to start talking about it. So what do you think? Let me know. I'd love to hear it. I think we would have a far easier job onboarding people if they knew they could buy a few bits at four cents a bit each rather than have to worry about buying a whole coin at 40k. I also think people would easily be able to visualize the price of a bit moving up from four cents to a dollar a lot easier than they can visualize 40k Bitcoin becoming one million dollar Bitcoin. But ultimately, if we're going to start spending this, right, working in sats divisible by 100 million, it's just not really that practical, right? But like I said, if you take the price of Bitcoin, and divide it by a million, that's pretty easy to do. And then you know that sats go 100 to the bit, just like cents go 100 to the dollar or pennies go 100 to the pound. Let me know what you think. I've done my bit, at least for now. I'm gonna keep working on this and see if we can get any traction. Moving on to the price of Bitcoin and the ETF news, okay? I love this. Everyone expects Bitcoin to bottom in the 30s this year, except for a few panicky people calling for the 20s and some nutsacks calling for 10K. It would thus be very fitting if Bitcoin never trades below 40K again. Now, I know, I know, before you go and type it in the comments, famous last words, okay? I understand. But it would indeed be very fitting if this current 60-day consolidation cycle plays out sideways before a massive rip higher continuing to validate that left-translated cycle top. Just saying. And whilst people are panic selling, whilst people are targeting 30K or significantly lower, 
some big boy behind the scenes is buying close to a billion dollars of Bitcoin in 27 transactions as of yesterday. So billionaires accumulating a billion dollars worth of Bitcoin. Moving on to the ETFs, okay? ETF trading volume hit almost $10 billion in just three days. So when I saw this, I was like, yeah, that's, that's not bad. That's not bad. But do you realize when this is put into context, how monumental this is? Because I didn't, to be completely honest. $10 billion is actually insane for the first three days. There were 500 ETFs launched in 2023. And today they've done a combined $450 million in volume. The best one, did $45 million in the entirety of 2023. So Bitcoin is absolutely dwarfing all of these other ones combined, the other 500 combined. So these are massive numbers. And if this continues, you better believe that we are indeed going higher for Bitcoin. Also $10 billion equates to roughly 1.9% of the estimated circulating supply, hoovered up in just three business days by ETFs alone. So if anywhere near this continues, we are going to see price appreciation in the very, very near future. You can see people just don't get it. Like, how is that correct? 2% would be 410K coins. What are you smoking? Because there's not 21 million coins circulating, is there? There is only around 2 million, probably significantly less than that in the real world. The available supply is diminishing by the day. So I remain quite optimistic here. Not to mention, Bitcoin just locked in its first ever official weekly golden cross. Check that out. So overall, I think Bitcoin is going to continue to do Bitcoin things. We know where our soft invalidation occurs. <laughs> is, that, is that a real term? We also know where our hard invalidation occurs. And we also know that if we keep doing Bitcoin things, then I think the path of most pain remains higher. One day at a time, open to all outcomes as always. I want to quickly jump into, I don't like this term, but macro. I just don't really know what else to call it. We had a Fed speaker come out yesterday and talk about not actually cutting rates in March, talk about pushing that out to May. And you can see now we have hopped all the way up from about 18 or 19% probability to 37% probability that we're still paused in March. So that is absolutely fine with me. Okay, that's fine because we know, don't you, especially if you've been on this channel, especially if you've seen the work I've done, that the market can only really rally for between zero and two months after they start cutting rates before historically has this big meltdown. So if we are going to continue to remain paused for longer, that gives us more space to complete the blow off top. That gives Bitcoin more space to run into its potential left translated cycle top and happy days. So I am not complaining about this at all. However, I will say this, I will be quite surprised if by the end of the week or early next week, we have not seen this number reduce. So I expect to see this reduce, but as it stands, you know, we have made significant progress in pushing the cuts back by at least a month or so as it stands right now. Remember, when these sum up to 85%, I consider that very, very likely that it's going to play out. But as it stands right now, I have no confidence in actually seeing the cuts unless this can price down to around 15% of the hard right edge. Something that could certainly change all of this, of course, is the US inflation rate. And as we keep showing, right, down consolidation, looking to make that leg down. Now it hasn't fully done it yet, but if we can see this roll over in the not too distant future, then once again, I am pretty sure we are going to see these rates reprice. Now, to be really clear, I don't care. Like I said, I'll be happy if this continues up this way because the cuts will show up at some point and the later they show up, the more space there is for a bull market. But I do more or less expect this thing to continue to price to the downside because I expect inflation to continue to roll over towards deflation. And like I said, I will be quite surprised if by the end of this week or next week, we haven't seen this reprice lower. Although if we don't, I'll be more than happy with that. Just remember to keep your eyes on the price because in the short term, the ETF is a distraction. Liquidity is all that matters to the general direction of crypto prices. Things are gonna get interesting once RRP, the reverse repo, dips below 500 billion. So you can see up and to the right at the moment, what is the significance of this? Well, they're eventually gonna run out of cash. And when they do, they're probably gonna have to print to prop it back up. So for now, liquidity continues to increase. Stealth liquidity has been the story of the past 14 months. And this is why markets continue to rip higher. So with all that said, I've kind of already covered Bitcoin, haven't I, right? We know where our soft invalidation is. We know where our hard invalidation is. And all the while we continue to do this, then we kind of expect to see further upside play out. I will say this, this looking an awful lot like it could be the making of a Dalai Lama. So that is to be determined. Dollar apparently on its way up to around 104, 105. So we'll see what can happen from there. This at the moment is looking more and more like a three year cycle low is confirmed though. So that's pretty interesting. Gold still getting a beating. So we'll see, will it break down? 
oil starting to roll over again, isn't it? So happy days there to take this off a log so my lines fit for once. Stock market still kind of holding that support line, still above its cycle low, isn't it? So, you know, lose this support line and that will be an early warning sign. We'll be getting ready to hop out of the way. But if it can keep grinding around and hold above that cycle low, then I kind of expect this thing to resolve to the upside. Notice the NASDAQ looks still holding above that all-time high break, isn't it, from back here? So happy days there. The Dow Jones still not stopped me out. So fired an early warning sign by losing support, but we got the stop choked up. So either way, we're walking in with a nice, decent three and a half thousand-ish points. The VIX is not quite looking how I thought it would look, to be honest. The VIX, I would have thought, would have started to roll over towards this lower means number in line with my yellow squiggle. So unless this thing's gonna reverse soon, then it might be time to start to reevaluate. We'll give it a day or two and see how the week closes. Russell 2K still kind of looking a little weak, but undeniably we have got potentially another entry setting up. So we'll see. And it's been a while since I covered the crypto related equities, but I know a lot of people are stressing about this. As I've said over and over again, look, big range at the bottom, range break in, let me get my pen. Big range at the bottom, green line is the range break, breakout retest resumption, looking to add on that resumption. So then zooming in a little bit, probably gonna look something like this for Coinbase. And we will think about think about getting long if we can get a breakout. So we'll probably pull this back, something like this, and then look to add here. Call me crazy, right? Probably lower down, maybe here. Call me crazy, but I think this is probably the way I'm gonna play it. I think the same is true of MicroStrategy. I've been over this a hundred times before, so I don't feel like I need to spend that much time going through all of it, but you can see the plan overall, right? We are looking to do the same thing, big range, breakout retest, look for that resumption and add a position. Same for Riot and Marathon. So what else is there to say, right? We'll cover this in more detail at the end of the week, but let's get through the week and see what can happen. In the meantime, I hope you found value here today. I hope you enjoyed it. And until next time, take care from me. All the best. Cheers, bye.